Hello, I'm Professor Toybox. I've got Princess Jasmine with me, and today we're going to build the logic for the forbidden treasure in my Cave of Wonders toy box. If you remember my playthrough video back in episode 42, I had a bunch of collectible gems scattered throughout this toy box, and if you touched one, you instantly died and respawned at the start of the cave. So that's what I'm going to implement today. And part of the uh, goal for this rail slide maze is to place some of these gems on these paths that the player is going to have to avoid. And the first one would have to come up here, for example. And you'll notice the first problem we run into <laughs> is the bounding box issue. And so if, if I place this up here, the player can glide right underneath this. So I really need this to sit right on the rail, if possible. But I can't place that there directly. And so what we're going to have to do is use a replayer to do this. So I'm going to set down the replayer over here. And we'll go ahead and set the property for this just to take the playback interval to zero. All right, and there's three gems in this room that I need to place. The first one is right here. And so I'm going to go ahead and pick this piece up and move it out of the way for right now so that I can place that gem down. We've also got this piece up here that we need to move out of the way. Because right now the default path comes around this way, so I want the gems sitting there so that they have to flip the switch to be able to go around this other path. And the third gem is going to sit on this rail right over here. And so I'm going to pick that piece up and move that out of the way. And now with those out of the way, we can put down the gems. And we're going to use the replayer again to do that. So I'll come out of the editor and step on the replayer to open the menu in the lower right. On my Wii U, I press B to start recording. And then I step off so I can get back into the editor and now I can place my gems. So the first one I'm going to sit right here. The second one is going to sit right up here. Again I want it to be on this track if possible. So we'll sit that right there like that. And the third one is going to be down here. And again, I want it to be right on that track, like that. And then I'll exit out of the editor. You can step on the replayer. Press B again to stop recording. Press A to clear. That takes the gems out. And now I can put those pieces of rail slide track back where they belong. So there's that one. There's that one. And then there's this one. Okay. And then we can come back over here to the replayer. One more time, step on. This time we'll do a playback. And that puts the gems where I want them, right on the rails. And with that, we're done with the replayer. So I can move this down below the train and get it out of the way. Now I know some of you on other platforms have run into trouble where when you load up the toy box again, the gems wouldn't appear there. And so what you could do is hook up a level starter to the replayer to do the playback. And uh, that way it would ensure those gems would be there. So that is all for this room. The gems are now blocking the paths that we need to figure out how to get around. But I want some other gems in here. And so we're going to come over to the little treasure chambers over here now. 
And for this we can put in some other different colored gems if we want. And we kind of want to place these where the player is going to have to avoid them. And so we'll put one down here, like on top of this treasure pile. Perhaps, like that. We could place a few of these around. We could put one over here. Maybe put it there instead. Put another one down here on the floor. There, as close to the floor as we can get it. <laughs> and another one over here. Maybe put one over here. Connecting these two little treasure chambers. And another one over here. And you don't want to block everything, but you want to put in enough of these that it's going to make it tricky for the player to have to get around this. So maybe we put another one over here. Kind of as if they wanted to try to come through that door, it would be in the way. And you'll notice each one of these I put down, the memory meter on the right is jumping upward a bit. And so you got to be careful not to put too many of these down. And that jumped up a little bit more. So this is going to limit the number of these, as I said, that we can put in here. So we have to be careful not to put too many in. And that little icon that's creeping up over there is for network lag. But if you're on a slower console, or there's something else that happens to be running on the console at the time, um, that can make things really tricky. And so you don't want to, again, put too many of these in here. We could put one like here to, that will force them up onto that platform and around. So you want enough of them that uh, the player has to make their way around here and avoid them, not get too close. So I think that's probably pretty good. We're going to have a few other things running in here, so I don't want to peg that memory meter with all gems. It's just giving them a little bit of an obstacle course there. And mainly that's because as they come into this level, they're going to come down these stairs. There's not a lot happening here. They're going to come into the treasure room, and there's nothing really happening here. And I could try to put some gems in here, but the room is so big, it's just going to be too easy to avoid them. So this is a little bit better here because it's a confined space, which makes it a little harder to get around them. So with that, we have all of the gems in place, and now we need to set it up so that when the player picks them up, they'll die. And for that, we're going to need a few toys, and to save a little time, I've already taken the liberty of placing these here in the toy box. So we have a collectible tracker, a time delayer, a kill switch, a sound generator, and a defeat manager. And I've also put down this checkpoint. And right now I've just placed these. Um, I have not set any properties on any of these. So um, the checkpoint, you want to make sure to put it with the little red dot in that upper left corner so that when they spawn on the checkpoint that uh, they'll be facing that direction. All right, so we'll come over to the collectible tracker and I'm going to open up the properties for this. And right now, the default properties are fine. It's set to uh, use the collectible type of all, and that's good because I got different color gems in here. And I'm not using any other collectibles, so that's nice. And I don't need to show these on the radar, so that's good. So on the collectible tracker, we'll do a new logic connection. When a collectible is collected by any, any player, basically, we're going to come over to our time delayer and start the delay. And I'm using a time delayer instead of connecting directly to the kill switch because I want to give a second of animation or so to let the player finish picking up the collectible. Um, 
So it gives them a second to realize what they've done before I just outright kill them. And I found if I collect, uh, connect directly to the kill switch, then sometimes you don't realize you've picked up that collectible and you just seem to die for no reason. So that's why we're doing that. The default property of one second is fine here. So on the time delayer, we'll do a new logic connection on delay completed. Come over to the kill switch. We're going to defeat the player. And we're going to go ahead and defeat all players. And so anytime any player picks up a gem in here, the Cave of Wonders is going to kill them both off. <laughs> that makes the logic easy, and I think that's consistent with what the Cave of Wonders did in the, uh, in the movie. Now we'll come back over to the collectible tracker, and one more time, a new logic connection. When the collectible is collected by any, we're going to come over to the sound generator and we're going to play a little musical sound because this is going to help reinforce what just happened. So we'll come down to the musical category and I'm going to play the doom chord. All right, and that's pretty much it. Um, that will kill off the player. And right now, they're either going to respawn right where they died or they're going to respawn up there at the start of the level. And so that's why we have the checkpoint sitting here. And uh, we could hope that the player walks over that as they walk in there, but probably the best way to do this is to go ahead and hook it up to this trigger area. So on the trigger area that we put down last time, we'll do a new logic connection. When entered by player any, we'll come over to the checkpoint. And we're going to set that to be the checkpoint for all players. And then on the checkpoint, under the properties, we can go ahead and hide the checkpoint so the player doesn't even see it. They don't really need to see that. And the other properties there are fine. Okay, and then the last thing I want to do is the defeat manager. Because as we noted in the toy box tutorials when we were covering this, if the player dies too many times, the game's not going to let them play as that character anymore. And I kind of think that's a shame in this case. So for the defeat manager, we're going to go into the properties and I'm going to turn off this figure revival required property. And that means you don't have to have another player revive you. You don't have to switch figures. You can keep playing as the same character. And so there we go. That's it. Now, I'm not going to go ahead and test this because I've already done that in the playthrough video. But basically, when I pick up a gem, it's going to kill me. And I'm going to respawn over at this uh, checkpoint as soon as I run through that trigger area. But again, I've already demoed that, so I'm not going to do that today. A couple other things I want to point out is right now I have not walked through that trigger area. And I have not stepped on that checkpoint. And so right now that checkpoint is not active and this is the time to save your toy box. And once you save your toy box, and once you step on that checkpoint, that checkpoint now becomes active and it's going to be the point where the player spawns when they come into this toy box or when they die. And so that's why I say once that checkpoint is activated you do not want to save your toy box. Because when you do and you come back in, you're not going to come in up at the top of the stairs. You're going to come in right over here on top of this checkpoint. And so that's kind of a problem. So you definitely don't want that. Um, and of course, whenever you pick up one of those gems, if I were to go and test this now, uh, that gem would be gone. And I could go and reset it with a button so that it comes back. But um, at any rate... Uh, I think that's sufficient for today, and you can watch the playthrough video to see what happens when you pick up a gem. So that's how you can use the collectible gems to create forbidden treasure in your toy box. It's kind of the opposite of what you would normally do with collectibles, which gives you an interesting new way to use them. And with that, believe it or not, we're almost done with the Cave of Wonders toy box. All I have left to do is the part at the end, where we free Jafar from his lamp, 
and then add the ceiling and the toy box door up here that leads back to the desert. And then we're done. But you're going to have to wait a week or so for that because I'm going to take a little break starting next week. And so while I'm gone, I encourage you to check out Papa H's channel or 72 Pringles channel. They've been working on some great toy boxes lately and their videos are amazing. And that's all for me today. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel or follow me on my blog if you haven't already done that so you don't miss the next episode. As always, you can find a logic diagram on my blog to help you build this on your own console or PC if you want. Until next time, take care.